Hello everyone, my name is Demismu and this is my assistant the foot. Today we'll talk about two of Plato's allegories, the allegory of the cave and the allegory of the sun. We already did the analogy of the line in the last video, so please check that one out as well. Oh, and make sure to subscribe and leave a like if you do like the video. Last time we talked about how Plato differentiates realms of existence and establishes a hierarchy of being, to which corresponds a hierarchy of knowledge. The lowest form of knowledge is imagination, which deals with shadows and illusions. Next step is true belief, concerned with sensual, real things. Then comes the understanding, which deals with the objects of mathematics, while the highest knowledge is reason, which knows the forms. The analogy of the cave is one of the most famous stories in the history of philosophy, which paints this hierarchy of being and knowledge. It describes the passage from ignorance towards true knowledge and everything in between. The cave, which we can see here, is a dark place. It represents ignorance. Prisoners are chained in this cave. They cannot move and they cannot turn their heads. They are stuck in this prison of ignorance and forced from childhood to look at the wall. Behind them is fire emitting light and between them and the fire is a wall. Standing behind the wall are shadowy puppeteers, moving and carrying carved figures of humans and animals. The puppeteers use the light of the fire to project shadows on the wall, which the prisoners observe. And the prisoners see these shadows moving in front of them on the wall. Since they have been imprisoned in this cave from childhood, this is all they know. This is their reality. This is what they think is reality. But this is ignorance according to Plato. You believe, but you believe in shadows, in illusions, in projections of the real things. All you can have here are opinions, opinions which aren't even true, but based on copies of the truth, on projections and your inability to turn around, to move your mind. But then something happens. A prisoner is released. He stands up and manages to turn around. At first, he is blinded by the glare of the fire. The first step toward knowledge is painful. You must abandon your prejudices. You have to leave behind everything you knew up to this point. But then the prisoner starts to see the shrouded puppeteers. He sees the carved figures. He realizes that everything he saw up to this point were shadows, imitations of these figures. And he realizes not the shadows, but the carved models are the true beings. He believes that he now knows the truth. If the chains and the wall and the shadows represent false belief, the level of imagination, the lowest level of knowledge, the fire represents true belief, the level of correct opinion, the knowledge of the sensual, real things represented by the carved figures. But the prisoner then moves even further. He exits the cave and is confronted by the sun. And again, he is blinded by the intense light of the sun. He makes again another step toward higher knowledge and first can see only reflections in the water. This is the level of the understanding, the level of the knowledge of abstract shapes or abstract forms, the level of mathematics and science. And finally, the prisoner is accustomed to the light of the sun and sees the realest of all things, the origin and true models for all imitations, the dog itself, the human itself. He is now using reason and can see the forms themselves. He can also look at the sun as well. He sees it clearly. In the previous video, we talked about how there is a form above all other forms. This is the form of the good. And in the analogy of the sun, the sun stands for the form of the good. Just like the form of the good makes all forms into perfect models for everything else, so does the sun nourish the real dog and the real human. The sun is the source of all existence in the material realm, and the form of the good is the source of all existence in the ideal realm. But the sun has another important function. It is not only the source of existence, but also the source of all knowledge. Why? Because we can only see things like the dog and the human through the medium of light. The sun, by emitting light, connects the eye with what the eye sees. By analogy, the form of the good connects the reason with the forms. Only through the form of the good can we know perfections themselves, the forms. But what happens now? The prisoner returns to the cave. He wants to set free the rest of the prisoners. But now, coming from the outside, he goes back into a dark cave and is again blinded, unaccustomed to the sudden darkness, just like when you put out the lights and can't see for a while. And he approaches the prisoners who are still observing the shadows. 
but he can't see the shadow so clearly anymore. His sight is impaired by the darkness, because he is now used to the light and the knowledge of the forms. And when he tries to explain to the prisoners that they are in fact being fooled by the puppeteers, they laugh at him and ridicule him. They say to him, you can't even discern these things and speak of higher ones. They do not believe him and keep looking at the shadows, thinking that these things are real and that they, and not him, know best. They remain in the cave, which is ignorance. The prisoner who traveled outside is the one in possession of true knowledge. He saw the sun, the source of all existence and truth, while the journey itself is the path toward knowledge. And in the next video, we'll talk about the Noah itself, the one who makes the journey, the soul. Thank you very much and until next time.